Hello everyone, before this episode starts we have yet another $40 patron, and if you don't know what that means is we get to pimp their stuff on the show. Woo! And today we have something called the Grindhouse channel, and if you have a Roku or a streaming device, or if you have a connection to the internet, which I assume you have unless you're getting weird Bible Reloaded bootlegs in the middle of Serbia, you can go to their website which we will link in the description, and what it is is it's kind of like... Uh, the B-Movie Netflix is the idea, and they have a bunch of different movies with a bunch of different categories. A lot of it's sort of B-Movie, uh, stuff that uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 might look at, but they also have a lot of really good movies, like they have The Terminator, The Shining, They Live, Mad Max, Clockwork Orange 7, all that kind of good stuff. So either on Roku, I believe that is ad-supported, you can check that out the same way you find channels on Roku all the time. Or you can go to their website, uh, and if you want, I think it's like, what, $20 a year, and there's no ads or anything? It's 20 bucks for a year, or three ninety nine for 30 days, or nine ninety nine for 90 days. It's actually a really, really good deal, um, especially considering, like, if you like that type of thing, because they have action, comedy, crime, uh, horror, kung fu, stuff like that, and you like the sort of grindhouse feel of movies, this is actually, surprisingly... A very good way to do it. We were a little skeptical when the guy approached us, and he's like, hey, check it out. Actually a really neat service. I so, know. I'm surprised they can afford all the royalty the royalties to these movies. I thought at first, like, wow, they must be stealing these, but apparently not. And he says it's all above board, so good for them. Or they're really good at lying to us. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> well, if they are, this is a fast track on the way to getting sued, but this is the ad for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is It is cool, though, genuinely. So if you like uh, kind of B-movies, cool horror movies, action movies, comedies, whatever, you get the idea. You can check that out. Uh, and I guess now it's time for the theme song. everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. Back yet again with the vengeance part, duh. I think we're going to be finishing off Second Kings, finally. It has been a fucking trudge these past couple weeks. I'm glad you guys have stuck with us. We love uh, you. Well, I'm. the best thing that came out of it was Sexy and Frank and something about you trying to suck crackhead dicks. So, I can only imagine that we'll get some sort of nugget of gold out of the turd that will be this episode. Oh, that's good. That's very reassuring. If you get to describe your series like that, that really makes people want to tune in, so mm -hmm. we should put that as an ad. Anyway. No one tunes in anymore. Like, we don't have to do that. You just, we just click. There's no tuning involved at this point. I don't need you to scrutinize my colloquialisms. Okay. It's All not right. something I need in my life. Anyway, so if you remember what happened last time, we talked about Hezekiah, who is a king, and he's in charge. He almost died, but he cried, and God was like, aw, a person cried when they found out they were going to die? That's never happened before, so I won't make him die. And today we're going to be finishing off his adventures, and then see what his son does briefly, and then we will see what happens to Jerusalem, because it's fate. I like that you called Hezekiah's uh, uh, stories adventures. Because yeah. It's just an extremely li uh, liberal use of the word adventure I'm, in, I'm, in my experience. I'm a good hype man. You bring me to... Are you? Like, remember that show Yo Mama with What's-His-Face? Nope. Okay, well, I'll be I'll be a hype man for that. Uh, okay. And then I won't have to do this anymore. I just gotta bring back... I, th I think it was Fez from that 70s show. Or a dead oh, guy. Oh, yeah, I do remember, I remember that. Yeah, you're right. No, it was definitely Wilmer Valderrama. <sighs> Remembering names that I I would not waste space it's remembering. the only name I know. <laughs> so anyway, today we're beginning in Second Kings chapter 20, verse 12. Envoys from Babylon. I've always hated how they spell envoys. Why? It should be, should be envoys. Phonetics. Fuck you, envoys. Is it French? It look, is, I assume it would be French. I don't French. care what it is. I okay. don't care. It's garbage. <laughs> At that time, Marduk Baladon, son of Baladon, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters <laughs> and a gift because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. That's that nice. sounded like like 
Street Fighter villains. Marduk Begalon. Maladon. Have you ever seen the Street Fighter movie? Yeah. With Jean Claude was... Van Damme? Yeah, no, I have. And the guy that played uh, uh, the Adams Family Patriarch, right? Yeah, he's in that. He's awesome. Of course! Yeah. Raul Julia. Yeah, he was by the way. Bison. He's a dead person now, isn't he? Yes, he is one of the many people who are dead. <laughs> 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 that's a weird I like way. that that's how we describe dead people yeah. One of the many Who, who have are... passed Well it's a fact most people are dead Pretty much every person that's ever been alive is dead There's like one or two holdouts <laughs> That one French lady And, and Magic Johnson <laughs> the, Magic Johnson is grading on a curve That doesn't count <laughs> Hezekiah received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouses, the silver, the gold, the spices, the fine olive oil, his armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. This is a good plan. I don't see how this is going to go wrong for him at all. Nah. Also, when you said the word armory, I immediately thought about Fallout 4, which tells you what I've been doing all week. It's sad. It's not sad. It's pretty sad. I had to hack the terminal! Uh, I've only played 40 hours or so. I'm. That's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. I'm it's fine. It's not a problem. It's not a Just problem. send help. And maybe pizza. <laughs> then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did those men say and where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied. They came from Babylon. <laughs> the prophet asked, What did they see in your palace? See, this is where I'm getting in the last episode. Remember how I compared him to Michael Scott? Yeah. He's a really enthusiastic boss who's like, oh, these people came, they brought me some stuff that's really nice, I need to show them all my stuff. Maybe he's trying to impress him, but then when uh, the assistant comes back and he's like, what did you do? And he's enthusiastically explaining, not understanding that, hey, you probably shouldn't show, like, enemies all the stuff that they could get if they kill us. Because then they'll kill us. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the words of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your predecessors have stored up to this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord, and some of your descendants of your own flesh and blood will be born to you, will be taken away, and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Don't take their junk! That's one of the weirdest things you could possibly threaten someone with. Your kids' is kids, we're gonna steal them and cut off their balls. Mm. That's an odd. Do you think they're gonna? Well, do you think they're gonna cut off their balls, or do you think they're gonna like tie rubber bands around them and wait till they fall off like a pig? Oh, what's worse? I don't know what would be worse if I have to. Honestly, I'd rather get them cut right the fuck off. Oh, I, that's it's a more violent end, but it's not this slow withering. Like every day you look down, you're like, oh man, like that gets in your head. I wish there was a surgery that would let you put your balls in your body. Because there is, it's called sexual reassignment. No, surgery. but I still want my balls. I still want to be a man. I just need to no, be I a understand. man whose balls saying, are on I the mean, outside. It's like the same thing, except they could just tuck them in. No, the it's surgery totally different. exists. It's just usually they take them out. No, in sexual reassignment, they also turn your your doodad yeah. into a hoo ha. Yeah, no, I got it. Yeah, I know, but I don't I want that. Who, I know how doodad things happen. I just want I them to it. move my testicles inside. And before people say. That kills your sperm count. I'm not using them anyway. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just need no, those I get it, sweet, no, sweet I, I, hormones. For for the ladies listening, um, I know you have your own female problems, like you bleed and shit, and that sounds awful. And I'm really happy that I'm not one of you. Also, I have like male privilege, which is great. But other than that, like having balls, just in general, they're kind of in the way of things, especially when you're not like after you hit puberty, like everything everything is like more f- floppy down there. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. and, and if you manscape, like, you got even, you know, stickiness happen. Like, if I could take these off at night and just, like, put them on my nightstand and, like, just sleep freely. I don't need my balls while I'm sleeping. I barely yeah. need them while I'm awake. You know what? what? I think I think God, when he was designing our balls, should have, instead of having balls, put them inside of our body and then just allowed us to have, like, a little vent that we could we could flick open. Do you want to know uh, what I was told when I was a Christian child at school why men have testicles and women do not? So if a man tries to attack a woman or rape her, that's the yeah. that's the don't rape me button, basically. It's so you the, can, balls? the balls? The balls. They're also the reason he wants to rape. I'm just, it's a catch-22. <laughs> God, not a great designer. Why not, why not just, like, line a vagina with teeth that can be, 
you know, put out in case of rape. I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just telling you what I was told at the Christian school I went to when I was very young. How young? Oh, I don't know. Probably. How young were they talking about rape with you? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I don't know. Maybe I'm interpreting it as rape now. Maybe they said attack. I, and I, I assume the assumption they're even thinking is rape. But I doubt they used the word rape with me because I was fairly young. I remember <laughs> learning what rape is, though. Isn't that weird? I was on the so moment you found out. I'll, I'll, t I'll, I remember when I found out what rape was. I was on a swing set. What? <laughs> What an innocent place to learn the most horrible thing you can do to a person. And I thought rape at the time was murder, because I don't, every context, think about it, as a child yeah, no, with no context, it. any context you've ever heard rape, it's yeah. it's it seems bad, and the only real thing you've heard that's that bad is probably murder. So I thought it was like murder, but someone explained it to me, and I was like, why would, why would someone do that? I was probably like... Seven. Yeah, you don't <laughs> was, know why people are sticking doodads and hoo ha's. I was so confused, and then I continued swinging and did not concern myself with rape for probably ten more years, or ever Until again. Rape doesn't come up in my life a whole lot. I'm pretty fortunate, I guess. It's because you've you you're not sexually alluring enough to be raped, but also you're not a rapist. Oh, that's good. I'm in a good place, rape wise. Yeah. In the Venn diagram of times you have to deal with rape, I am I am not. You're an outlier. Yeah. It's not even a power thing. It couldn't be a power thing with me because I'm, I'll am i give you power over me, like whether or not you're penetrating me or whatever. <laughs> I'll just be like, oh, I hope you have a nice day. Also, like, I'll I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Anyway. Yeah, just poor baristas being reverse sexually harassed by Hugo. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for this beverage. Also, like, and you start bending over and they're like, you can, you can just go. It's fine. And you're like, but are you sure? Coffee's like, too... I'll give it. Coffee's too easy to get nowadays. But I'm not at least <laughs> presenting to someone. And the coffee feels too cheap. Anyway, <laughs> well, we're about a paragraph into this. Yeah, this is going well. <laughs> Verse nineteen. The word of the the word of the Lord you have spoken is good. Hezekiah replied, for he thought, will there not be peace and security in my lifetime? So remember, I know we went off on a tirade there, but remember that he has just heard your family will become eunuchs and your kingdom destroyed. And he went, this is good news. This is good. This will be all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> good guy. As for the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all of his achievements and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought water into the city, are they not written in the books of the annals of the king of Judah? Maybe. Hezekiah rested with his ancestors, and Manasseh, his son, succeeded him as king. Yeah, I know it's Hezekiah rested with his ancestors. He died, but wouldn't it be interesting if he just laid down on a pile of bones and was like, <sighs> not going to do king things anymore. That's the way this to do retirement. it. This is the way I want my retirement to go. I'll hang out with skeletons for my retirement. Skeletons little, are the best. They probably have lots of spooky stories. That's a little they have lots of drink with an umbrella in it, laying yeah. on skeletons. Lots of stories about what it was like working in animation in the 1930s, doing dancing scenes. Wow. That is a, is a, that's an acute reference. I don't even know if it is. I don't, I can't tell if that's lazy or really intensive. <laughs> I feel like a lot of what I say goes into that category, but anyway. We're going to skip chapter 21 and a couple other ones, actually, but what you need to know is that after Hezekiah dies, his son Manasseh comes to power, and he's kind of a dick. Uh, he comes into power at age 12, which is pretty impressive. I don't think I can do that. Even, like, King Tutankhamun was like, dude, he's a little young. Uh, <laughs> but... He makes some bad decisions for whatever reason. He brings the Astro Poles back. He brings back the worshipping of the Bales. And then he has a couple successors, and they kind of go along with it too. There's one or two good apples in there that take him down again. But no matter what, they keep wanting to worship the Bales. To be fair, if I was 12 or 8 years old, I would have wanted to worship, like, the Megazord. Probably. That thing's pretty sweet, though. Especially when you get the sword at the end, and it's like, pshoo, and then Tommy's yeah. in charge. It's pretty rad. Yeah. And then he's, anyway. he's got a knife flute. <laughs> And then there's a dragon. Yeah. You'd think after, like, all this, this Bale stuff keeps going back, though, God would get the hint. Like, it's been on again, off again enough where you should probably just cut your losses. Maybe check out what they're doing in China, God. Go find some new chosen people. They invented rice. Well, they didn't invent it. They cultivate it, though. Uh, they also invented big hats oh. and, uh, and uh, ninjas. Asian hats are the best. You know, you know the Asian sombreros? Yeah. The Raiden hats. Yeah. Those are rad. Anyway, so today we are going to do uh, the fall of Jerusalem, and that is in chapter 25, and after that we'll finally be done with 2 Kings. Christ, I'm so glad we're chugging along. 
because we're gonna kill Chronicles in one go. So I that's know. good. We're, Can't wait for the new keep Testament. Asking, I was gonna say, people keep asking when we're gonna get to the New Testament. Sooner than you think, baby birds. Now Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon, so in the ninth Zedekiah is the king at this point, BT dubs, in case you needed to know that information. You probs did. Totes, bay. <laughs> So in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched against Jerusalem with his whole army. He encamped outside the city and built siege works all around it. The city was kept under siege until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. That's a lot of that's a lot of time. I love sieges. They're like they have all the benefits of a blockade, but you don't have to have boats. It's real awesome. <laughs> also, uh Nebuchadnezzar is uh, the uh, the the ship in in the Matrix yeah. that uh, Morpheus flies around in. So <laughs> that's the ship the ship in the Matrix that Morpheus flies around in. I feel like there's better ways to describe the ship from the Matrix, but okay. No, just Morpheus flies around in it. Nope, they're all in it. The entire Tank's, t- Tank's brother gets murdered in it. Like or the Tank entire f- the entire first remember. movie takes place on the Nebuchadnezzar. Mm-hmm. Entirely. Yeah. Except for the well, Matrix I mean, scenes. I mean, well, I mean technically the... that's also on there. Yeah. Well, not the beginning. Anyways, that's a good movie. Nah. That's a good movie. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine in the city had become so severe that there was no food for the people to eat. Then the city wall was broken through and the whole army fled at night through the gate between the two walls near the king's garden. Though the Babylonians were surrounding the city, they fled towards Arabah. But the Babylonian army pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All his soldiers were separated from him and scattered, and he was captured. I have a question about you dealing with a famine okay. in the land. Okay. Okay, so... Say there was a famine and you couldn't get food. Maybe your microwave breaks and okay. you're, just, just, you're just ruined. Uh, do you eat your own shit? Do I eat my own shit? Yeah, like like at a certain point, like say cannibalism is off the table, you're alone. Are you are you starting to think about chewing on some waste? I'll consider it, but if it's like consider you're it? just doing it and prolonging your shitty end of life shit eating period which is of course a period we're all very right. aware of then no i'm not gonna do it because i don't want to spend the last days of my life eating my own poop hmm i guess it depends on the kind of poop that comes out my butt if i'm thinking about it is there a like good kind p- well i mean let's let's be real there's there's a better kind of shit to eat <laughs> what's the better kind the more solid the better i think because it's dry i don't wet shit to me sounds like it tastes worse i don't know i've never tried it I've never tried to eat a poop, but you ne- you rarely see dogs eat their diarrhea, but they often eat their regular poops. Can so I just, maybe they're onto something. Can we take a step back here and appreciate the yeah. fact that the show has literally gotten to the point where we are having a multi-minute discussion about the merits of eating your own shit? I need to know down in the comments if you would eat your own shit, and if so, where on the Bristol stool scale does your appetite for your shit end? The downfall of Western civilization has begun. That's all I have to say about this. A three, by the way, is my answer. No less, no, nothing, nothing to the right of a three am I eating. I refuse to entertain (laughs) this any longer. (laughs) He was taken to the king of Babylon at Riblah, where sentence was pronounced on him. They killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. Then they put out his eyes, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. That's reasonable. Cut his fucking eyes out? Yeah, but wow. the last thing you get to see with his eyes is them killing your son. Hope Not that image shabby. is burned into your brain forever, because it's the last thing you're seeing. On the seventh day of the fifth month in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, commander of the Imperial Guard and official of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He set a fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down, the whole Babylonian army under the command of the Imperial Guard broke down the walls around Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, the commander of the Guard, carried into exile the people who remained in the city, along with the rest of the populace and those who had deserted the king of Babylon. But the commander left behind some of the poorest people of the land to work the vineyards and fields. That's nice of him. That was the one time it was nice to be a poor person. Like, yeah, your life is still shitty, but it's just shitty under a different person. So... (laughs) It's alright. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars, the movable stands, and the bronze sea that were at the temple of the Lord, and they carried the bronze to Babylon. They also took away the pots, shovels, wick trimmers, dishes, and all the bronze articles used in the temple service. Wick trimmers. I know, I was gonna say. Wick trimmers. We got all this valuable metal, what are we gonna do? Well, we took their candles, we probably need a wick trimmer, you can't just let that shit burn out. Why not? Go to a Yankee candle and ask one of their representatives. They'll fill you in. 
Real important candle news. You're welcome. The commander of the Imperial Guard took away the census and the sprinkling bowls, all that were made of pure gold or silver. The bronze from the two pillars, the sea, and the movable stands which Solomon had made for the Temple of the Lord was more than can be weighed. Each pillar was 18 cubits high, the bronze capital on top of the pillar was 3 cubits high, and was decorated with a network of pomegranates of bronze all around. Pomegranates you know, of bronze? Bronze balls? No, they're bronze pomegranates. That's if We don't have a word for ball yet, so pomegranates is how we say sphere. <laughs> The other pillar, with its networks, was similar. I'm glad that they thought to put that in there, like, if someone was like, well, what was the other pillar like? Come on, Bible. It was similar. <laughs> it, was, it was similar. Dave. How similar? 85%-ish. I, I like that it wasn't exactly the same, though. It was not identical. It was similar. Yeah. Yeah. How that, how exactly that pillar was is lost to history, and I don't think I'll ever get over that. The commander of the guard took prisoners, Soraya, chief priest, Zephaniah, the priest next in rank, and the three doorkeepers. Of those still in the city, he took the officer in charge of the fighting men and five royal advisors. He also took the secretary, who was chief officer in charge of conscripting of the people of the land and sixty of the conscripts who were found in the city. Nebuzaradan, the commander, took them all and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. There at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, the king had them executed. So he killed a lot of people. Really, Bible? I could have said that shorter. He murdered a ton of people. The end. Yay. So then it just goes on to basically list a bunch of names and what they did. But what happened was basically Israel got fucked. At least Jerusalem did. That's for sure. Uh, and then later we'll have some stuff happen. For instance, if you don't know, First Chronicles and Second Chronicles that we're going to, it's not a lot of new stuff. It's sort of uh, more records about what had happened in the previous two chapters. So next time we'll maybe touch on a couple things. But basically we're going to get those done quickly because they're not really story driven. Um, but later what will happen is we have the reunification of Israel under the Persians. And yep. that'll be interesting. Uh, and then we'll be right trucking on towards the New Testament. And then we'll get some Jesus stuff, which is always great. So Jesus. Also, Job is happening, which is fun. Yeah. And Esther, which is going to be ridiculous. So thanks, everyone. Uh, before you go, make sure you check out that cool movie streaming service. Uh, again, link in the description if you like those kind of movies, which you should, because a lot of them are actually pretty fucking rad. Uh, I, however, have access uh, sneakily. Ha 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 ha. They gave you the info so that you could check it out so we could give them a pimping. That's not sneaky at all. It's not sneaky. It's pretty overt. It's a little overt, but I get to watch The Terminator now, so that's a bright side. Anyway. Or, or you could have looked it up on uh, Netflix. Which Shh, cool. Whatever. Don't tell me how to watch my Terminators. Anyway, thanks everyone. <laughs> you can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You can follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. You can always subscribe and get more of our scrum diddly umptiousness -ness -ness stuff. You can always check out our Patreon. Uh, we do a once a month patron only hangout. I believe those are done for this month, though. Next month, early on, we'll be doing that. So next month's hangout is going to be on the third. We're probably going to try to do that on the first or second Friday of every month, depending on uh, our schedules. So the third, probably around 6 o'clock Eastern time, just like the other ones, because it's that's a good time to do it. Sure. So thanks, everyone. Until next time, I'm Hugo. And I am Jake. And this has been The Bible Reloaded, and we're finally fucking done with Kings. Woo! That's all I got. Just a woo.